Match Pairs Design Students will be able to explain when and why a match pairs design should be used in an experiment. In the last video, we learned about blocking in experimental design. Today, we will look at a special type of blocking called match pairs. Now, remember, the purpose of a well-designed experiment is to determine the effect a treatment has on the response variable. We've talked in class about extraneous variables variables that we expect could affect the response variable, but through random assignment, we'll be, we believe they will balance out in both groups. However, sometimes there is simply too much variability in the response variable, and it makes it difficult to determine how much of that variability is actually due to the treatment. As a result, we can do a match pairs experimental design. Such a study usually assigns both treatments to each experimental unit or subject. Or we can match two experimental units that are most alike in terms of any extraneous variables. In each of these designs, each individual person in the first one is considered a block, while the two similar subjects in the second one is also considered its own block. So let's try and look at this more specifically with an example. So let's say we want to test whether tea or coffee increases productivity more. We could do the first example of a match pairs design where each subject would receive both treatments, perhaps on different days. Be careful, random assignment must still play a role. We might flip a coin for each subject if we get heads, the subject takes coffee on the first day and tea the second day, and then if they get tails, it goes the opposite. We can look at another example where we actually want to match two people who, or two subjects, two experimental units that are most similar. Look at these socks. They're all different, yet if you notice, the ones that are matched are most similar. So suppose that gender, age, and weight are extraneous variables for a new drug study. Each block would consist of a matched pair of subjects with the same gender, same age, or similar age, and same weight, similar weight. Remember how important randomization is. Well, this is still blocking, so we would randomly assign one person in this block to receive one treatment and the other person to receive the other treatment. For both of these examples, at the end of the day, you want to compare the difference between the different treatments. So if one person takes one drug, the other person takes the next drug, I want to see what's the difference within each of, that, each of those blocks. Match pairs experiments can be tricky, and we will come back to them at the closer to the end of this year when we look at statistical inferencing. We're going to see what a huge difference match pairs designs can actually make for understanding how effective a treatment actually is. This is your homework. Um, be sure to write your response to the following prompt and be ready to discuss in tomorrow's class. It says, you have been given the task of determining if right-handed persons have stronger right hands than left hands. A sample of 10 right-handed persons is selected randomly. Explain why a matched pairs design is most appropriate for the study, and how would you carry it out? Okay, we'll see you in class tomorrow. This is a big thought experiment, and I can't wait to hear your ideas.